F. Welcome <laughs> back to Miles Edgeworth Investigations with this fucker, <laughs> Lawrence. Dude. I'm ashamed you have you as the star of this show. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know who the person was until you told me after the show. I just kind of did it because you did it the way. I just know the lines or something. Need some editing, I guess. I mean... If that's the case, you probably have to edit all the coronavirus shit out, technically. I mean, I don't have to edit the COVID-19 stuff because people take the piss out of that all the time, but I'm not going to let you take your piss out of a dead person. <laughs> we, do it, we do it all the time. See the dead body over there on the floor? Ha! These are fictional characters. Anyway. Anyway, let's move on. What are you talking about? How is that a lie? This is a note that the victim left for you, Mr. Portsman. A note? It was, it was left under your door. Did you not notice? And right here it says, But you're out. You were not in a room when the victim came to call on you. Then where were you and what were you doing? Ah! Can I explain it in full detail for you? Oh, lying oh, coldly! around in my room. What? The theme. Lying coldly. Alright, can I, can I finish the sentence? Oh shit. What? No. I need to announce the fucking music, man. It's good. <laughs> yeah, we interrupted my sentence. Anyways. Fuck your sentence. You're busy snooping around in my room, the very room you had Miss Bird open for you. Objection! That's just nonsense! You have no evidence that I made the girl open your door for me! Oh, but I do! I have very decisive evidence! D no way! This is proof positive that you had Mr. Bird open the door before you! Uh, is it the. No prince. This one? Yeah. I had your door dusted for prince! My door? <laughs> what for? Come on, I bet you didn't find anything. You sure are good at wasting time. You're right, I didn't find anything. And definitely not Miss Bird's fingerprints. Her prints? What did they have to do with anything? Let's put it this way. If she was really the one who opened, you, opened your door, then the prints would naturally be on the doorknob she touched. Gah! Further, all of the prints on my office's doors knob has been wiped clean off. I don't assume it's because Miss Bird's fingerprints were on it. Do you think it's time you gave him your charade? I have to turn this up because this shit's good. Dude, see, it's probably going to end in a second. We know you saw you into my office with the intent of stealing something from me. And Detective Faith found you out. Possibly because he heard sounds coming from a room whose occupant was on leave. Mr. Portman, you killed Mr. Faith to silence him. I had the misfortune to return when I did. You had to threaten me as you escaped. As I said, you had the gun to my back. No one gets away with committing murder in my office. <laughs> you, you know, you're actually Ben. You're not actually laughing. You just kind of have your mouth closed. It just was so funny, pal. <laughs> oh, with that look of stiff seriousness on the face of this office's finest prosecutor, as he makes a huge mistake in accusing me is simply too much to bear. There's just nothing else like it in the world. What? Mr. Edgeworth just explained it all and you even backed it up, you're the murderer! Stop trying to be slippery and just admit to the crime already, you piece of shit! And as I said earlier, it's also circumstantial, so full of conjecture. You say you checked my doorknob for prints? Well, I can readily confess that I had wept that, door, that knob down well. Eh? I'm a little obsessive compulsive, you see. I didn't want to touch a doorknob that you had touched. Which is why I wiped the door... The blah, which is why I wiped the knob down as soon as I could after you opened the door. After know, that, it makes off. perfect sense that only Jim's and my old prints would be on there. Bro, he doesn't like people touching his knob. <laughs> you made that up just now, didn't you? Furthermore, is the note Jim left for me? Do you know how exactly when it was? For all we know, he could have left it there before I arrived at the office. Like girly evening, for example. And you're, are you saying you failed to notice a note in your doorway? Hey, even geniuses fail at times. I was probably too preoccupied by work-related matters, although that's no excuse. Now that's just a flat-out lie. There's no way you didn't notice a note that size. Ah, but you can't prove that, can you? 
Say something to stand with. Back me up here, sir. Ah, Coulson makes a good point. I can't prove that he didn't simply overlook it. Besides, I have an airtight alibi. Airtight, you say? I only realized that I had one just now as we were talking. I guess it would have been better for all of us if I had told you sooner. If memory serves, you came back to this office at around 2 a.m., correct? And it was then that you had that unfortunate confrontation at gunpoint with the culprit. But exactly that time, I was down at Criminal Affairs. Ask around. I'm sure the other detectives will corroborate my story. It's the perfect alibi. So I think we can actually beat this statement, I don't, this, this, I don't think. You can only press everything know. and then run out of shit. Yeah. Do you really think it's that perfect? Like I said, I don't care. Ask around all you like. You'll see for yourself. Detective Gumshoe. Oh, that's me. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna check his alibi, sir. Be right back. Uh, Mr. Joker, sir? I think we're in trouble. It's just like as he said. He goes down in criminal affairs, so they saw him around 2 a.m. You see? All of the evidence points towards him being the culprit. So there must be a contradictory point in his alibi somewhere. Well, there might be something we have to press on here, but I don't remember where. We'll press on. Well, let's press. You are correct, it was around 2 a.m. Are you sure? It's really important to me that you're spot on with the time. I remember checking my watch, Dan, and I make no mistake, it was 2. Oh, giving testimony like a pro. Okay, so you came back to your office at 2. It is as you say, however... Yes, however, you are the only one who claims to have bumped into the culprit. So then, tell me! Did you see the person's face? Was it me who you saw? It was pitch black, so I couldn't actually see. OBJECTION! Ah, oh, come now! I'm sure you saw something! Try a little harder, why don't you? I'm beginning to feel like I'm the one being interrogated here. Oh well, it doesn't matter if you remember or not. It only matters that you ran into the culprit. So you paid the Criminal Affairs Department a visit? Yep, right after I left the prosecutor's building, I headed straight for the precinct. Hold it. Hmm, well, we did go around, ask, around to control your testimony. And it was just as I said, right? Y yes, sir. A number of detectives said they saw you around that time. See, I had the perfect alibi. That's the ace I had up my sleeve. Ugh. Impossible, he actually does have the perfect alibi. What's wrong? Why the sudden sun look on your face? Uh, can you say anything back, Mr. Edgeworth? <laughs> I think we've reached the end of the line and it's time to get off this crazy train. You there! Sir. Please escort the young lady out, but remember, be gentle. Baggy. Detective Gumshoe! Is there nothing I can do? There must be a way out to turn this situation around. What are you gonna say, Rob? I didn't say anything. I just had noises. If I only had a clue, did, miss, did I miss something that could help cut, Help me cast out. out. If only I had a clue that I missed something that can help me cast out on his alibi. Uh... Jesus Christ. I need to calmly really think this through one more time and with logic. Don't you talking judgment. Hmm. I think that and then files in this array. I think files in this array is what it needs to be. points to the shelves being disturbed once before and after the murder. But who is to say that the person did did it is the second time is the same as the first? Which could mean that there was another person who paid a visit to my office tonight. And now you've the last two. 
We did it, but we done did it. If indeed there were two culprits, then that resolves the only contradiction behind our murder weapon. Despite that there are two, the fact that there are two bullets, holes, two bullets, either two bullets or two bullet holes. Two That's bullets regardless. here in this room. Yeah, brain. Despite the that there are two bullets here in this room, the murder weapon only shows signs of being fired once, leaving the possibility that the other bullet was fired from the other visitor's gun. Furthermore. If we suppose that the second culprit's gun was the one pointed at my back... Objection! Mr. Portman, it seems that I need to amend my assumptions regarding this case. Great, so you finally come to your senses. Mr. Edgeworth? Sir, what do you say? This has been a big misunderstanding on my part from the start. I had assumed that the person who I ran into was the killer, but that may not be the case. What do you mean? The person I ran into was just your average thief. Uh, thief? But, sir, doesn't that cause some sort of contradiction in the effects? Not at all, it simply means that the killer was someone else. I mean, that in actuality, two cops were stolen to my office tonight. Uh, wh what do you mean, you two? It explains how both of my shells were stolen twice, and how there were two guns. Mr. Portman tricked Mr. Bird and gained entry into my office. Objection! Now you're just leading the argument. You still don't have any actual proof, you know. Shut up and let me talk. In the end, if you're really innocent, you should have nothing to worry about. <sighs> now then, returning to my scenario, Mr. Portman was out to steal something from me. Which is why he took my secret safe and ran my shelves. This is the first time. So then. This would be when the files were put back in the reward, right? Correct. And then just like what and just when he was about to look for somewhere else, who should walk in but his own partner, Mr. Faith. Why did Mr. Faith come into your room, sir? He probably had business with Mr. Portman, which is why he was in the area. But that's when he noticed sounds coming from my office would be my guess. Oh, because you were supposed to be away, right? And he must have thought it was odd. He came into his offices to check it out. Correct. And as a detective, that was the right thing to do. And as a man who's dead, that was the wrong thing to do. Ah. Rob? Oh, sorry, what? I misclicked. I, I misclicked. <laughs> turned my head for a moment, and then when I turned back, I hit the button by mistake. It's fine. Because it was Mr. Portman, Mr. Faith probably let his guard down. But Mr. Portman was not so merciful as to let him leave alive. He waited for a chance to stop and stole Mr. Faith's gun from him, and then... He killed him. He silenced Mr. Faith for catching him in the act of stealing. Bitch. Uh... This was the moment in which the first shot was fired, the one that landed in my files. Following that, Mr. Possum wiped the gun down and left it behind as he made his exit. He could afford to do that because he had also left the take dying message behind. You're such a complicated troublemaker, you know that? Well, if things were as simple as that, then that would all be solved. However, there was just another visitor to my room, and this is where it gets a bit complicated. There was another? Visitors, sir? Yes, and this other person's suggestion was also to steal something from me. You bitches, leave my shit alone! Now then, even after Mr. Portman left, the door to my office remained unlocked. However, this new vista had no way of knowing that, and so... They stole the master key from the security guard's room. And then entered my room and searched through my shelves. This was the second time they were disturbed. And it seems that he found their prize. Stolen file, right, sir? Correct. Only just as the thief was about to leave the file, I appeared. The thief then threatened me with their own gun and made their escape. The second bullet was fired during that brief encounter. So the show's getting messed up twice in the two bullets. 
It was doable because two different people were doing those things at two different times. Precisely. So now do you see, Mr. Portsman? The person I met was just a thief. I was not, in fact, Mr. Faith's killer. Your ally for the time frame in which I in which I ran into the other person was now irrelevant. Because we now know that the murder took place during the false co first culprit's visit. Objection! <laughs> Those are funny, pal. Absolutely splendid. Your scenario explains everything. Of course it does. It's Mr. Edgeworth, after all. But you know, it still doesn't change the fact that it's all circumstantial. In fact, it slows down suddenly. Supposing if, and that's a big if, your theory is right, it would indeed render my alibi, which is with Sue's scrutiny, mind you, irrelevant. But there is still one defining point of your argument for which you have no evidence. Your supposition that I was the first visitor. Mr. Edgeworth, you can't let me get away with that stuff. I mean, that voice said you can't let him get away with that shit, is why I thought I read that. <laughs> <laughs> but he has a point. I have absolutely no proof at this point. Don't say that, sir. I don't believe this. Don't worry, Maggie. I'll do something if I must. You know something? I find your attitude to be somewhat peculiar, Mr. Edgeworth. If the person you met really was just a plain old thief, then why is that person not your main suspect? That is, if your theory is correct. That thief you ran into should be a real suspect, wouldn't you say? We should be out there looking for that thief right now. They might still be nearby. I hate to repeat myself, but as I've already said, I was training in my room. And when Jim came to deliver some evidence to me, I was down at criminal affairs. So I can't be expected to know what happened around here after I left. Do do do. So you should be out there looking for the thief. Of course. Now isn't the time to be wasting time on dead-end discussions. I don't forget at all. This is a tool, dead ended. I find your alibi to be fascinating. Let's continue where we left off, shall we? Yeah. I know he's lying. I know he was here at the scene of the crime. I just have to find a way to prove it. Which means you need to press him. Probably. Do, 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 do. Press the man, man already. Uh, don't think it's this one. We should ignore the second thief. Press. But according to Mr. Bates' note... Hold on, I thought we already cleared that up. Didn't we say that Jim left that note for me in the early evening? If you had proof that he left it at a different time, say, just before he was murdered... I don't have any no. That's right, bitch, so I insist again that I was in my office the entire time. Uh... Pra Why don't you go there with G I mean, Mr. Faith. Ah, that's because he said he was tired and was going to take a quick nap. You know those sofas in the hallway? He likes to sleep on those. It's one of his habits. And what are the evidence he brought? There are things related to yesterday's case. Just two items, a gun and a pendant. Well, there you go. Entering this piece of testimony seems too crucial to let slip through the cracks. Well, there you go. Present him, Rob. Uh... Only two pieces. I believe the proper phrase here is, you fail. Uh, excuse me? You fail as a prosecutor, Mr. Porton, as you intend to keep hesitance hidden from me. Hesitance? <laughs> uh, you said hesitance mean? instead of evidence. <sighs> <laughs> George? I'll just say I'm too tired to be paying attention. <laughs> oh, crap. It's time we're ending soon, anyways. It's almost, we're almost done. What are you talking about? I haven't hidden anything from you. Well, here's a piece I think you should read carefully. Ah, it says that Mr. Faith was bringing you three pieces. Yes, and this is the victim's real dying message to you, Mr. Portsman. The. I can't believe. To get tripped up by simple arithmetic! Man, you felt it rookie. Where is the missing piece of evidence? I... it's... Right, Rob. Rob, he, he failed at the exhibition math. 
He's you have it, don't you? Hmm? That makes him the second stupidest person in the room. <laughs> the first being me. <laughs> I always uh, win. Only the guilty would make such a face. That's a gumshoe. Uh, I'm not guilty. Wait. What did you say? I'm not guilty. <laughs> Christ. You don't have to say it, sir. I'll pat the guy down from head to toe. I'm gonna touch this man. Now hold still. What? Don't and come any closer! Him. I'm warning you! <laughs> you really punched him. <laughs> this is all part of the investigation, pal. <laughs> don't even think of us stopping me. No! TV, hey, what's it? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you heard this one of sir. Stop down his pants. <laughs> Despite what you said, it would appear that you do have something to hide. I already hide something like that. <laughs> There's only one way to reason why you aim to hide evidence of this cover. Because it would unequivocally point to the point of that person himself as the real killer. <laughs> Let's examine this video tape in a little more detail. But a section of the tape that will drive the last nail into his coffin. Well, look, on, look beneath, Rob, and you will see. It's got blood! <laughs> it's blood! <laughs> This blood is it? Yes, I believe this is what the pro good prosecutor was trying to hide from us. This blood is still fresh. You mean? Don't you drink it? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> so I mean the blood, uh, Detective Faves blood. N no, no, you've got it all wrong. Look, no matter the Nile can save you. We had to run the blood test to find the truth. <laughs> you told us that you had received evidence from the victim earlier. Now you will tell us when and how the victim's blood found its way onto this video. Yeah, it's totally suspicious. Was it a moment of his death? Did Detective Faith have this video on his person when you killed him? You know very well there's no way to prove that. Not even if we were to examine this tape for fingerprints. God. If I had to guess, I'd say that the only ones hit on here would belong to the murderous you and Mr. Faith. No! Impossible! I... I'm... I... <laughs> I told you I you was leaving my office. I asked you to get out. You could've, you could've easily avoided this. But you didn't leave. And now you're convicted of murder. Good job. Yeah. What's about the files go? I ate them. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, Scumjack. I told you to eat the blood. The They're blood likely blood. taken as evidence. Mr. Fortsman has been uh, placed under arrest for the murder of Detective Buddy Faith, sir. Finally, out of my office. Very good. And the results we got back from the lab techs uh, on the same turned out to be the real solid, sir. The real solid. The, the real, real solid. solid. They were, they were the real solid. Sir. The real solid. <laughs> <laughs> the blood bottle came back. It was definitely Mr. Faith's blood in there. And as a bonus, they were also able to lift a few of Mr. Faith's fingerprints as well. Thank you so very much, Mr. Edgeworth. I still can't believe I got to see your cool deduction skills outside the courtroom. And this is the last time I'm you'll impressed ever be beyond seen. words, sir. You'll never be seen again. <laughs> It was nothing, I'm just sorry you were caught up in my murder in my office. Please accept my humble support. Wait, she wasn't involved in your murder, you're still alive. Oh no, I'm not. I'm dead inside. Oh, it was nothing really compared to what I've been through, I mean. I consider myself lucky that it was only a burglary and a murder this time, sir. If it had been a hold-up or a hostage situation, I'd have thrown my hands up in the air. I think I'm finally rising up from a goddess of misfortune to just an unlucky person. Something tells me we should have hired a different person for security detail. You know something, sir? That Mr. Portsman really was one corrupt prosecutor. And why would you say he was corrupt? Well, I heard that there was a number of suspicious uh, things related to his court cases. There's even rumours of how some of the evidence he used his forge, sir. <laughs> Pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> forged evidence, huh? They say he even decided not to prosecute a few cases for some really vague reasons. 
Ooh, that guy was a complete disgrace to the entire profession! We never did get around to ask what his reason was for breaking into my office. Yeah. Whenever we got near the topic, you just got hemmed up. But we can be pretty certain it was to deal with something. This is just between, uh... Okay, okay. <laughs> this is just this between... Is between. <laughs> There's a rumor that some <laughs> huge organization is involved behind the scenes. Oh, uh, well, well. But Mr. Paul's not willing to divulge anything, it will certainly needs the credence to that rumor. Man, sorry. It would seem that we haven't heard the last of this. Huh? Yeah, Mr. Portsman isn't a bad isn't the bad guy? I didn't say that, but rather there are still many more mysteries for us to solve. For example, we still haven't figured out the significance to this piece of evidence. The files. Take that! The person who sold this file, the other villain of the night. Yeah. Batman. <laughs> well now we know who it was. <laughs> And what happened to those stolen pages? I wonder, who in the world was it that held me at gunpoint? Mr. Edward, sir! Yes? I came across this while I was processing your office earlier, sir. This card! Good job! You're rehired! Yay! <laughs> Is that a bird or something on there? It's not just any bird. It's the mark of the raven, a three-legged raven. Oh, I see, it's Maggie Bird. Even you should know what this is, Detective. Uh, it's that thing, isn't it? The great thief everyone's talking about? The mask is back, by. It's kidding. Yes, it's the mask of the great thief, Yata Gerasu. Yata Gerasu, sorry. It's the Yata Gerasu, whoops. Under the mark of the legendary bird, the Yata Gerasu is a noble to the end, and modern Robin Hood. Look at how edgy is on this picture. Labelled mysterious and phantom-like, the Yatagorasu appears and vanishes at will. Though we don't know much about this thief's ultimate goal, we do know the targets. The Yatagorasu likes to find and make public evidence of corrupt dealings of all sorts. So he's Batman. Yeah, Batman, yeah, it was like, it's Batman. We have found the Batman. The Batman has always performed in silence and always with perfection. Ah, I'm glad we have finally found the Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm also in this game now. <laughs> Once the target is chosen, no dramatic calling card or announcement is sent forth. Is that the chosen corporation is infiltrated without even to target noticing. Some days later, the evidence that was sent found is sent out to the mass media. Along with this single card, the Blue Eyes White Dragon. I mean, anyways. Although it has been a while since the last Jaskarasu's appearance. But Mr. Edgeworth, that card's in the ban list. What? No! It can't be! <laughs> yeah, it's right here. It's oh, shit, I can't, believe, I can't believe Blue Eyes White Dragon was banned. <laughs> no, no, you have to caress it. Oh, okay. It's the location. Oh, yeah, it's... <laughs> It's the location of where the thief put the stolen cards. Wait, is, wait, isn't that a legit banned card? Yeah, Yada Garasu oh, is banned. Oh shit. Because it skips your opponent's draw face. Oh my Christ, I didn't even realize. I forgot. So the person who sold the console of the file was the Yata Garasu. Yata Garasu. Organization. These are words that appear in the dictionary. Except one. The murder in my office. The return of the great thief, Yata Garasu. Looking back, I can't say I didn't see these events coming. For they were heralded by the incidents that began to occur two days ago. See, if he's right, he has months between his cases. Andrew, of... bam, 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 bam. Yeah, like, this entire game is, like, just over the span of, like, one really hectic week. Yeah. And the next game is the span of the next week. Anyway, we'll see you guys next time on Miles Edgeworth Investigations. Bye-bye. See you around. See you.